Hello. Happy Tuesday to you. I'm, uh, let's see. Make sure this is all running. Looks like it is. Um, screen. All right. So today I thought I would paint <clears throat> with acrylics because I wanted to try this new idea of maybe using a palette that was on my easel here. And also, I wanted to paint a picture. Sorry, let me adjust this slightly. I am live. <laughs> live from my bedroom. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I wanted to paint a picture of the Blue Room Theater, which is a place uh, very important to the Chico art scene. And uh, recently they informed us that they had to shut their doors at that location for good. So I thought that was a heavy blow to those of us uh, that enjoyed all the all the good times there. So I thought as an homage today, I would paint a picture. <laughs> it's kind of a funny picture here, but it's the picture is from a play I did. I'm actually with the long hair. You see my hair is getting long, but it's used to be even longer. Uh, with the white shirt in the front. Um, but this is a picture of a play uh, I helped write and put together. Oh man, it must have been um, like six or seven years ago, maybe even longer. I'll have to check the date. Anyways, <clears throat> I chose this picture because I wanted one where it shows the stage relatively bare. Um, I think I'm not even going <clears> to <throat> put in the backdrop, the, that colorful backdrop that was painted on there. I think I'm just going to keep it even more plain um, than, it, uh, than it already is. So with that in mind, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm at kind of a funky angle, um, but I'm going to give this a shot. Um, first thing I'm going to do is draw the uh, stage shape. So it's sort of got this flat area here where the stairs come up the stage. Oh, I need to get... And I'm just sketching with pencil first, so before I get in with the paint, so I don't totally mess up. Okay, I'm looking at the audience as kind of a triangle. Um, so I'm going to come down from the edge like this. I'm painting on a uh, canvas paper, which is also something new to me. I've never painted on canvas paper before. So I'll let you know how it feels as I'm going. So, like that. Um, this left edge doesn't come in all the way. And it goes like that. And this shape gets narrower. So this is the stage. And once I get this shape in, it'll help me put all the other ones in. Something like that. And then these stairs come down. There's one, two, three. But then there's like a lot of heads kind of going up. There's three rows that I can see. Something like that. And then this way, there's some heads here. This is the front row. Maybe there's a couple more people here. Maybe three. And then there's two I can see here. All right. So there's all the audience area I have kind of sketched in. Now I'm trying to, now I should get the rest of the stage. Looking at it, I might have made it a little bit too thin. So I'm going to. Uh, a little bit. All right, and then where the backdrop comes up, this side here, um, and then it goes pretty much horizontal, but maybe a little bit of a slight tilt, like that maybe. And then just about here it stops, and then there's a another white thing that is doing. This one's more horizontal now. 
Uh, and back there. <laughs> Man, the memories coming back from, from doing this play. This was called Pageant Dad's 3D Experience. And it was a comedy play that me and my band put together. Uh, so it was a musical. There's a little staircase here. Um, and then there's some big light fixtures. I thought that was actually kind of a cool thing to include, which kind of, uh, if you've been to the blue room, the that top area is very exposed and you can see the, uh, the poles and the lights hanging from right above you. So I want to kind of capture that in here. We've got uh, three lights, one, two, three, and one kind of facing in. There's a bright spot right there. Now there's some poles, maybe one. Um, So yeah, if you are following along with a pencil or or uh, even paint, if you have it, then feel free to pause at any moment and then pick it up as soon as you catch up. Because I'm working a little bit fast because I know I only have an hour to do something that is usually maybe a couple hour job of painting, a whole painting. Um, but I don't want to leave you hanging and and not finish it. So, so there's that entrance. I think that's really all the uh, information I need. I just want to make sure I have my angles are okay. Um, and yeah, something like that. Oh, there's a little hospital baggie here. I don't want to forget. Okay, but that looks, it feels like the blue room. Um, and that's what I want. I want maybe this diagonal thing here. Spent a lot of time in here. Maybe this audience goes up a little bit more. Like that. All right. And I like the composition of this. I think it's probably a little light on your screen to see, but it fills the, the page fairly nicely. Now, I want to try and put my paints on this vertical area here so I hope it works I've never tried this but we'll see how else will you learn and I want to start with the darkest colors which in this painting actually I think I'm gonna go for close to black so I'm gonna grab a little bit of black to get me most of the way there and then I'm gonna go with some dark colors so I got blue And then I'm gonna do a, a red as well. So, cause I know that'll make a dark purple. And then just to balance it out, I'll add a little bit of yellow on here. Yeah, they stick to it fine and it's vertical. So hopefully you can see it nicely. I'm using a brush that's a flat brush. And I'm, I don't know, maybe a, half inch or something. Um, let me see if I can focus this a little bit better. There we go. All right. So here we go. The, I'm going to start with the darkest area. So I'll grab the black and I'm going to mix in a little bit of blue and a little bit of red just because I, I like a little bit of tint to my black, not, not full black. And now I'm just going to go and think of this as putting in stickers. So I just did one long stroke, but actually I'm gonna backtrack and I'm gonna pretend like I'm picking up a sticker and then I'm putting it down right there. Just put it down. And if you if it starts to show the canvas through, that means you're, uh, you need to pick up another sticker. So just putting st stickers down instead of wiping big swipes because uh, that'll give it a different look but today I want to I kind of want to go for this more um, paint painterly look 
so I will. And it looks like it gets warmer that way, so I want to kind of stop there. I'm going to start over on this side and do more lifting. I'm going to go right off the edge of this paper. Um, Again, um, little stickers. Every brush stroke has a direction and isn't trying to cover too much ground. Mm -hmm. All right. And then just above the stage here, there's this curtain. It's a black, so I'm painting it in black, but and then I'm going to do a quick line across the top of there. This might help you see. Man, I don't want to get in your way too much here. Like that. Small space between the two. All right. And then there was a doorway in it right here. I was caught myself, I was starting to scrub, but really I want to, again, lay down stickers. Okay. Oh, that is not... There we go. Got to keep my angles right. Alright, so next I'm going to go over to the right. So I want to grab more red and a little bit of yellow. Alright, just to make this a more of a browner black. And then that's what I'm going to fill in this area with. So, la, la, da, da, da. Cause I, I think it's nice to have, especially if you're filling a lot of, like this picture is pretty dark. So there's going to be a lot of black in it. So I want to have different shades of black floating around just to make it interesting. And also, I think that these little strokes, you might not be able to see until I zoom in later, but the little strokes give it a nice look, especially when they're slightly different colors from each other. Okay, grab that black. There's also a bit of black in this far bottom right corner, um, kind of the backs of these people against the chairs, so I'm just going to fill that in. Alright. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to kind of, care not carelessly, but kind of quickly um, find the blacks around the page and just kind of put them in roughly where I see them. Um, this is the rest of the dark colors that I see. Hold on, let me move this tape. I'm going to move it right. Yeah, maybe I don't need it. Maybe this top tape will work. Um, I'll get the stare all the way. Try to catch myself when I start painting it like a house. We're not painting it like a house. I'm trying to paint it like a, like a painting. small, very purposeful strokes like that. And they all build together to make this. So I'm going to do one thing down here. There we go. Good. All right. Now, uh, where else is there black? There's black in the railings up here. So maybe that warm black again. I'll just put in these railings with strong strokes, which you'll need um, enough paint 
on your brush to get a good distance. That, and then maybe one more. Like that, cool. Now I wanna do people's hair. So I'm gonna grab more yellow and turn it into a dark brown because that's what a lot of these people's hair looks like. And I'm just gonna put in some heads. So I got one here, one, two, three, four, five, and maybe one six over there. Now I'm gonna lighten this color a little bit more with some more yellow for a little bit lighter brown and I'm gonna do the next row of people which I missed one right here I should add that there. Um, here's a little bit more red it's looking green black actually tends to be bluish so if you mix yellow and black together you get kind of a green color interestingly enough so this row there's um, Quite a bit of gap like this these people start about right here one okay two three I'm actually trying to get each person just because that'll help me you know relatively stay in reality I could just kind of arbitrarily put these dots wherever but then the spacing might be a little off and I don't know might as well learn from the picture I'm looking at. So now the front row, there's maybe 12 people in the front row there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12. And then these people kind of up that way cool and then the left side I'm gonna grab a little bit more red and put it in right here maybe a little more yellow we got one and two real close together and then there's one and two three four and then one guy kind of here in the back all right so I've got some relative areas of where the heads are for all my people um, I gotta work kind of quickly because this paint dries very quickly. So I'm gonna go up to these lights and put in these big ones that I see. So one, kind of like that, and then there's like something right here. So there's a bright light shining I might address. Let's see, there's this guy over here. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this is not going up to it, but now it is. Um, there's, shoot, these lights here. One, two, three. Maybe two lights pointing down. One, two. All right. And then there's a light over here. Let's do Alex's pants, maybe. I didn't really sketch him in. Alex is the guy talking to me. Here, maybe I'll do this staircase real quick. Um, this one talking to me. I didn't sketch him in, but I'm just gonna go for it. Uh, let's see, his pants start about here and they go and Got a kind of an intense stand there. There. Uh, all right. I'm gonna measure out the bottom of this stage there. There we go. All right. There's some black between this white area. I'm sorry. I'm blocking it off with my head. And this area. So I want to try to separate that out a little bit. So I think it should be like. Yep, 
feel my uh, brush starting to kind of uh, get all gummy. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in some water and zip it off. Got this little ice cream cup cup full of water. Not ice cream, unfortunately. Though ice cream wouldn't do much to clean my brush anyways. All right, looking good. Uh, I think it's time to maybe get some of those uh, yellows in the ceiling. They're, it's kind of a yellowy, maybe not that yellow. Let's try, oh, too green. Uh-oh, oh, actually that's getting close. In the ceiling, uh, a little bit grayer maybe. So in the ceiling between the rafters, I'm going to just paint that in. Uh, I'm a little bit too yellow. I'm going to go a little bit more red and a little bit more blue in there. Again, I'm trying to get myself to think of each brush start as a sticker and also go the direction that I see that's in, which is kind of a diagonal left direction. Running low on paint on here. That's okay. Lip, 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 lip. And since this is acrylic It'll dry very quickly. Actually, it's drying on my palette even. So I don't really have to worry about if I make a mistake, I can paint right over it quickly. I don't have to wait for it to dry for a week <coughs> like I do with oil paints. Um, or what, even watercolors take sometimes a little bit longer to dry because the, the paper can be pretty wet. But not today, no. All right, getting getting some shape. Um, yeah, you might notice that the color I'm using is a little bit more intense than the actual color in the picture, and I think that's a good thing. I think it's nice to embellish a little bit and put in some skin colors in here um, towards the back. Just some people looking around. Again, not being too precious about anything exactly, just getting an impression of people in there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Um, I want to make a gray, a dark gray, so I'm going to turn this color I have hopefully into a dark gray by adding blue, maybe a little bit more red to that, it's looking green. That's looking pretty good as a dark gray, let's see. Maybe a little bit more blue. Blue tends to make things look a little bit more uh, metallic, maybe. Okay, so I'm going to add this dark gray I just made. Let's see if I'm looking a little too dark. Oh, well, um, to fill in the rest of the curtain, I want to get this all filled in. So there we go. Yeah, you can see it's actually pretty close to the black I mixed, but that's okay. I can always add, again, I can add color, or paint over whatever I want. Or maybe I could limit myself to one gather of paint and then maybe three strokes, getting a phone call. Just mute this so I can see what's going on. Yeah. Alright. 
Just ginger. I wanted to check if I was home. I am home with you guys. Where else would I be? Uh, let me. Alright. Cool. So I've gotten most of this background covered in with black or something close to black. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll just get this one piece of tape holding this whole thing up. I, I don't want it to fall on me and me to get paint all, all over myself, but I also want to paint all the way to these edges. So I gotta risk it a little bit. Um, cool, so that's looking pretty good. Um, I'm gonna actually cover up this guy here because I misplaced it. This is just that little hole. So that's looking pretty good. I like this composition. It's got this white area that kind of comes down like a check mark. These are interesting shapes. So I think even with it not, even if it wasn't the blue room or something that meant something to me, I think it's a nice picture on its own, which is always a plus. All right, let's see, what else can I do up here maybe a little bit more? Just, all right, I'm gonna wash my brush now. I see, you see I have a very, very different shades of uh, black here. So after I get a little bit of that blue in, I'm gonna have to switch out my palette. So I've grabbed the bluest blue area and I'm gonna start to do the stage because the stage looks very blue. And I still had a little bit of water on my brush, which generally I think is a bad idea to mix your acrylic with too much water. Um, but no turning back now. I mixed a little bit of that red in, and you can see how it made it a little bit more purple up here. But since this paint is so thin, I'm actually going to break my rule here and kind of paint it like I'm painting a house and not like, uh, not like I'm putting stickers down, like I said before. So I don't want to let it dry into this weird shape. So um, it gets darker over here, so I don't want to be afraid of that. Just want to fill up that whole stage. Now maybe if I do big strokes I can smooth it out a little bit. There. Alright. I mean the actual color is definitely a little bit more purpley. I wonder if I can get a little bit of that purple in there. No, it's just gonna darken it out. All right, I need to get more paint on my brush. But let's see. I I don't like to waste paint, so I always like to see like okay, there's a bunch of this messy paint on here. Is there anywhere that I could use this kind of dirty yellow color? I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, maybe a, a, just a little bit of the, some more hair tones going on. Just pupil colors. Um, maybe a little bit more in the ceiling. There. All right. Uh, now let's refresh my palette here. Is this area by I'm just gonna untape it I'm gonna fold it this is just wax paper by the way it makes a good disposable palette um, when I do acrylics since they dry so fast they gum up my palettes pretty good so I don't want to use like a nice wooden palette 
for acrylic. Plastic works much better. You can wash plastic off in the sink really easily, which is what we do at 7th Street. But here at home, I my wife accidentally bought extra a lot of wax paper she didn't need. So that's what I've been using, and it's working out pretty good. Okay, so now I want to focus on some of the lighter colors. So I'm going to use white this time on my left. and put enough on there so hopefully it doesn't dry super quick but white and then I do want to get that blue again this is actually a different blue than I was using before but we'll see how it works and I do want the, um, a little bit of yellow it's always good to have at least a little bit of red yellow and blue on your palette because those are the primary colors and some red. All right. So, here we are. I think I'm going to start with yeah, that the the blue of the stage. I want to fix the stage. It looks like there's a lighter area here and then it kind of gets deeper and darker over here and here. So, I'm going to go in with straight blue now and put some of that maybe towards the door over here and a little bit over here and if I work quickly this will look cool so I'm gonna mix it now I have a, like a purple color but it's a little bit too dark so I gotta mix white in with my purple color now it's kind of a lot in there And I think this is one of those colors that's really vivid and might not be mixable necessarily um, because when you add white it dilutes the color but if you don't add white it's too dark so there's some colors that are actually impossible to mix unless you have specialty uh, unless you have specialty uh, paint colors but with just red blue and yellow you can get a lot of colors but not all of them so I'm just adding this purple in there maybe a little bit more blue towards the middle trying to add some variance and so it's got some life because there's a lot of area on this stage huh it's not super yeah I think there should be lighter lighter area now you can see I'm painting right over those legs I painted earlier and that's okay because uh, this is where the spotlight's kind of hitting and then go over to that rim right kind of to the edge got the stage it's uh it's not as purple maybe as the original so maybe I have to add a little bit of that in but that's okay if it's not exactly that's probably good all right now can I add any of this purple anywhere else it looks like there is that purple coming from the lights so um, up in here I can add maybe even a little bit lighter purple yeah coming from up here there's the lights are what's making that purple in the first place uh, so it's cool to be able to have the light source up above also represented I think that's cool anyway uh, that's probably pretty good um, what else is this purple? Maybe I'll 
Here's a little bit on some random people's clothes. Something like that. All right, that looks good. Now, what can I do? I guess I could use that white to paint the um, backdrop now. So it is pure white, but the only area that I'm going to paint it pure white is the top right, because that's where the light's hitting it the hardest. And then I'm going to start moving towards this purple color I have, so a little bit more purple here. And it actually gets a little bit pinker, too, so I'm going to add I'm going to make like a special pink color uh, that it's going towards. And that's that. Try to make it smooth. It's a little bit hard with acrylics to get a smooth transition, but you can get something close to it. Um, a little bit even. This is as purple as I'm going to get down here. So I'll use that as a guide and just keep adding white to that. There's a little bit of just blue and white, just to give it a nice mix. A little bit more white. A little bit more of that pink. Again, I'm laying down stickers. As you can see, I'm doing short, but I'm not just filling it up all at once. I'm trying to do kind of a, uh, yeah, more where it's a little bit, they call it painterly, but where you can see all the brush strokes. Um, for a quick painting, I think it's a, that's a cool way to do it. Ah, and already this is prettier because I've co covered most of the white. What I need to cover is this area here. So once I get all these done, I think I should focus on the audience before I put myself in. Because maybe I'll leave this stage empty. Who knows? Maybe it'll be enough. But one thing's for sure is I do need to add them. So. I'm going to start with the lightest colors I see. I see some people in like a uh, gray over here, so I'm just going to put a little bit of a little bit of yellow into this to make it gray, but um, let's put in some gray over here. There's also some gray hair over here. Maybe like one maybe down the bottom. All right. Now, if I add yellow to that, I should get this kind of tan color. And that's in some people's hair. It's kind of a yellowy color, not a tan color, but I'm just going to add little spots of it as I see it. Now, if I add red to that color, now I should have more of a peachy thing going on, which is kind of closer to the skin tone of most people in the audience. So I'm going to put that in different spots. Especially along the front. Uh huh. So, my goal here is to fill up all the areas that are, that are white. Um, uh, be, by the time I'm done here. So, I'm going to add red now. I've got this bright red. So, I'm going to do this guy's shirt over here. He had a bright red shirt. Um, there's a little bit deeper. Let's see if I can make this a little deeper for the guy's shirt right here. All right, cool. Um, anything else red? Maybe a little bit from here. I can kind of spread it out a little bit and make make it up too. I don't have to follow who's in the audience. Now I, that looks like a good spread of red. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit more purple again. And with that purple, I can get in 
maybe a few more sticks. All right, um, that's looking good. What color am I missing? There's a lot more black actually in there, but before I get there, I better get all the lighter colors. Um, Oh, whatever. Okay, I'm, I'm already pretty close, so I'm gonna get the yellow in there. Now I have a dark green, so that means I need red. I'm just looking for the opposite. So there's a good, good black color right there. So with that color, I'm gonna go ahead and just fill in most of the rest of this without being too precious about anything. So I put in most of the colors that I saw so I should be confident that if I don't cover those up too much, that it should look okay. And this is a kind of a nerve wracking kind of, uh, thing to do because it's like, I don't know, that's I might waste all the time that I just did. I'm leaving a little bit of the black poking through, if you can see, um, I'm, or the white rather. I'm, I'm leaving little bits of it, not really on purpose, I'm just trying to fill in as much as I can without going over the colors I already did, and that's allowing for little bits of white to poke through, which I'll try to cover up, but it's nice to have little glows, I think, anyway, so I'm okay with it. It almost looks like the light's bouncing off of maybe they're wearing jewelry or something. Jewelry. Alright, now I'll finish this side over here too. Just getting in there, getting in there. Alright, and then these stairs, I want to be a little bit grayer. And lighter, so I'm gonna add that. This uh, just to make it a different color for the stairs. So I'm still, still use the stickers. What I mean by stickers, if it's not clear already, I realize I didn't really explain too much what I meant. What I mean by that is just um, imagine that there's like little stickers and you peel and just put them on things like I have some stickers on my guitar, I have a sticker on my car, bumper sticker. But in that same way, you can kind of make whatever color you, sticker you want and then pick it up with one brush stroke and just put it down. But don't try to like scrub it around or anything. It's definitely more um more of a uh, application process and not really a scrubbing or a that kind of thing. So that helps me. All right, now I see that in I have these lines going this way, but also there's kind of uh, some lines going this way and more stuff generally going up on up here. So I'm gonna add these kind of diagonal lines uh, with this purple just because I don't know I can be I can use my artistic eye and change colors however I want and you can too when you're painting um, so I'm actually gonna scrub a little bit of purple because there's so much water on my brush I get this, this kind of nice transparent layer it was an accident, but since I have it, might as well use it. And then, so I'm getting this transparent layer of purple over the yellow, over that dark yellow up there. So the combination of them is interesting because they are complementary colors. Can I? I realized it was a little bit off the screen. There we go. So it's getting there. Um, I do think now, looking at it, um, that I will need to put people on the stage because uh, 
It well, I don't need to, uh, but I think that would be good because there's not too much going on in the picture, and I want I want a area of interest and focus to be towards the center and not up towards this messy part up here. Which is okay. It's okay to be messy. All right. So what I'm going to need to do is put me and Alex in here. Um, and I could move us over. Um, I could put in this little cage thing too, which I think actually I'm going to do. So that is going to require some white. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and complete the picture here with everything. So. We've got this white line that goes like this. Ooh, too much water. Too much water in my paint. Too much water in my paint. Oops, that's no good. Oops, oops, that's no good. I'm gonna dry that right up with a paper towel. Ah, whew, crisis averted. Yeah, you saw how it kind of dripped down. That was no good. I, I washed my brush, but forgot to uh, dry it all the way. I did tap it on the paper towel, but that wasn't enough. Okay. Try that again. Ah, much sharper line. Um, so now I'm going to go across to about here. And then this line goes down to about here. And down to about there. And that goes across too and then there's some vertical lines that go from maybe like here Something like that. Um, and then this. Uh, hang on. Looks like we need to make these taller. This is all very rifty here. But that's what I'm in it for. I'm in it for the rift. Just kidding. But it is an enjoyable part sometimes. All right, that's kind of cool. All right, now I since I have this white still, I'm gonna go for my shirt here and I'm the one talking in the front foreground so I'm gonna do like a this shape this shape for my arm and then it kind of comes back up like that there that's pretty good now I still have this white so I'm going to make use of it by making that flash up here actually so there's like a a circle and then there's kind of these spikes coming out of it. So I think I'm gonna have to stand up. Excuse my view here. But just because I want to sort of emulate this effect, which I've never done. I think that turned out pretty good. All right. You guys are seeing a slightly lowered version here. There we go. That's better. Hey, dang it. <laughs> there. Now there is little bits of color in that white. So I'm gonna, okay, I have this kind of light flesh tone now, which I'm gonna add over a few, actually that's looking a little bit too white. So actually I'm gonna leave that, but I will do 
Alex and I on stage. So I've got a hand and a face. Then Alex's neck and face. I'll add a little bit more red in. And then uh, his arm. His arm. And go around like that. And then my feet. My feet are like barefoot. <laughs> Alright, I think that's probably good. Now I can kind of add a few more little touches here and there in the foreground, maybe covering up even more of that white that I haven't yet. Cool. And since I have that color, I might as well add it to my to this. Maybe a little bit more bright yellow to this uh fire thing, or this uh, light shining at the camera. Uh-oh. All right. Cool. Now I'm going to wash off my brush. And uh, let's see. I've got about 10 minutes left, just for anybody counting. Uh, I want to see what should I do next I think I need to get some darks into that pole there so I'm gonna grab some purple and put just put on the dark edge of be color 60 but there is two colors going on on this We've got shadows. And then I'm going to try to do Alex's pants now. So I'm going to make an even darker color. And I'm going to just see if I can do it. Got one line going up. Got them kind of high. The other one coming like that. All right. And my pants are much whiter, so I'll just add white to them. And then these were actually tights. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I had fun wearing tights for a play. But I painted them a little bit thick, that's okay. So Alex has this nice red shirt on, so I'm going to have to wash my brush. I want to get that shirt uh, in there just to complete his figure. Uh, I'm not going to worry about a face or anything. I think trying to do those details, sometimes when you're trying to do too many details, it actually makes the picture less realistic um, because your eye goes towards those little details and maybe how they're not drawn correctly. So, so I've been trying to keep myself from trying to do too many details because it's actually a little bit more believable and realistic sometimes to not. Um, I think we just need his hair to complete him. So I'm going to add a little bit of the wrong direction to go color wise oh well there we go he's got blonde hair I've got kind of a blondish color so I'm gonna go ahead and do that maybe add some white for the highlighted areas I'm going to get a 
darker color for my hair, so I'm uh, just darken that up to a nice brown. Actually, I'll add a little bit of that brown into here too. That's better. And then a little bit of brown into mine. Oop, too green, need more easy green. Need more yellow. Browns, there's so many different shades of brown. I'm getting better, but it's fun to think about them as different like ooh is that a yellowish brown or is that a uh, you know reddish brown <laughs> so there we are on the stage at the blue room uh, let's see what's the time got four minutes if I want to be exactly on time so what can I do in the four minutes Maybe add a little bit of light piping at the top. Um, yeah, because there is this uh, pipes that go kind of across the top like that. And maybe this way as well, going through. light. Oh, oh well. Mm. All right. Mm, a little bit more of this color maybe in the audience. I like to, if I have a color somewhere, it's nice to have a color spread out. Oh, I forgot that little uh, hospital thing. Sorry. I was on one track of thought and I got distracted. Um, but yeah, if you have a color on one side of your painting, it's generally a good idea to have it somewhere, even if it's mixed with another color, elsewhere on your painting. So there's this thing here. It's like one of those, uh, it's like an IV drip bag from the hospital. So that is kind of a small detail. So now I can kind of consider myself in last minute small detail mode. So in that, I'm going to do maybe little bits of these lights just to make them pop a little bit. And This is back wall, that's actually a little bit lighter. I'll put that in. Alright. It's looking a little shiny, but overall I think it's kind of cute and does the job of paying an homage to the blue room. Hmm, looking back and forth, what else can I notice? Um, maybe just these light, very light highlights in these purple lights. So I'll get this purple mix again. And then with that purple, I'm going to add some really light small marks in the light. that yeah and then that kind of makes them look like they are light there is another right there there so with uh, my last few seconds I'll say goodbye and thank you so much for uh, watching me paint and hopefully you learned something by listening to me chat too um, yeah I hope you have a good uh, rest of your Tuesday and take care.